In this video, I'm going to take a look at enthalpy change of reaction, but I'm going to focus on some awkward examples. So the video is suitable for all of the major exam boards, and I really hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so. So the three questions I'm going to look at, the first one is straightforward, and then the second two are less so. Um, the link to the questions I'm using is in the description of the video. If you wanted to download them, have a go first, that's up to you. Uh, otherwise, just play on and watch me go through the answers. Okay, so before we start looking at any of the questions, just to recap the definition for enthalpy change of reaction. So it's the enthalpy change for a reaction for the molar quantities as shown in the chemical equation. Now, if you remember in enthalpy change of combustion, you've got to combust one mole of the substance completely in oxygen. Um, for enthalpy change of formation, you've got to form one mole of the compound from its elements. Um, so there's no restriction in the enthalpy change of reaction definition for that one mole. It's however the equation has been balanced. Okay, so we'll start with the easy example. So we've got zinc reacting with cup sulfate solution. There's the equation, nice easy one-to-one -one ratio. The students added the chemicals together in a polystyrene cup and they've measured the initial temperature of the solution and the maximum temperature of the solution. And we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for the reaction in kilojoules per mole and we're given our answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. And we've got some information here that we've got to um, pay attention to. So the first thing we need to do is work out how much energy has gone from the reaction into the solution and heated it up. So that's your Q equals MC delta T equation. So for M, we're using the 50 centimeters cubed of solution we're saying that that's 50 grams because we're told to treat the density to be the same as water and we're told also to ignore the slight increase in mass when the zinc goes in 4.18 for the specific heat capacity again we're told to assume that the solution has the same specific heat capacity of water and that temperature rise is 38 degrees c so just the difference between those two temperatures so that's given an answer in joules of 7942 and we're turning that to kilojoules because our final answer needs to be in kilojoules per mole next thing we do is work out the moles of copper sulfate solution and that's because the zinc is in excess so the calculations based on the moles of copper sulfate um, concentration times volume remember the volume needs to be in decimeters cubed 0.05 moles and then to turn that into an enthalpy change for the reaction we take the kilojoules we divide by the moles and we get minus because it's exothermic temperature went up 159 kilojoules per mole i've given my answer to three significant figures that's appropriate because all of the data is to three significant figures so moving on to the first of the two awkward examples, very, very similar to the previous one. We've got two chemicals reacting together and the temperature change has been measured. But you'll notice in this one, there's no mention of the word excess. So we're given the mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate and the volume and concentration of the hydrochloric acid. So the first thing we need to do is work out how many moles of each chemical and then we're going to establish the excess reagent. So the moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate first, mass over the MR of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is 84, gives a moles value of 0.042, and the moles of HCl concentration times volume, remember that's got to be in decimeters cubed, 0.06. Really easy to see which is the excess chemical because the reactant in a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's basically the biggest number, the HCl is in excess, and so therefore all of the sodium hydrogen carbonate will react and 0.042 moles of HCl will react. So we're calculating Q first, M, C, delta T. So M now is 30. It's the mass of the solution, not the mass of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. That would be a common mistake. So the solution has a mass of 30 grams. Again, we've got this assumption 
density of the solution and the specific capacity to be the same as water and we're also told again to ignore the slight increase in volume of the solution so 30 it is 4.18 for C and 10.3 is the temperature change so that gives 1291.62 joules which in kilojoules is that so to get the enthalpy change for the reaction we just take the kilojoules divide by the moles and we're getting plus endothermic the temperature of the mixture fell so plus 30.8 kilojoules per mole to three significant figures and moving on to the final example so very similar scenario again two chemicals reacting together there's the equation for the reaction it's being carried out in a polystyrene cup and the students measured the temperature initially and the maximum temperature you'll notice I've already highlighted the word excess so we we don't need to calculate the excess chemical we're told it's the magnesium so we'll just get straight into the Cutel's MC Delta T first and then we'll pick up the awkward bit in part two so we're using 25 for M because the volume of the solution is 25 cm cubed and we've got that same thing going on density specific capacity same as water and ignore the slight increase in volume so 25 times 4.18 times 28 for that temperature rise uh, 2926 joules 2.926 kilojoules remember the magnesium's the excess chemical so the moles of silver nitrate concentration times volume 0.0128 so here's the awkward bit here now normally to get the enthalpy change for the reaction we've just gone kilojoules divided by moles but in this case you'll notice we've had to double it and that's because in the balance equation we've got two in front of the silver nitrate so if we didn't double what we're actually finding is the enthalpy change for one mole of silver nitrate but remember the enthalpy change for reaction is the enthalpy change for the reaction in terms of the moles involved in the balanced equation so two moles of silver nitrate so we double it so the answer comes out at minus exothermic 457 kilojoules per mole three significant figures appropriate just like the first one because all of the data is to three significant figures